What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host that is playing through Resident Evil Revelations on my Switch, it's alright, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. By the way, those who've played Revelations 1 and 2, which one did you like better? Because I'm gonna co-op the second one. Alright, this story's called, Steal My Design and Get All the Credits, Enjoy Getting Kicked Off. So, my friend over in Korea studies fashion design. She sometimes sends me over the sketches of the designs, and they all look amazing. And then again, I'm not into fashion. She is particularly interested in designing handbags and purses. She told me a story about how she shut down one of the most entitled, self-centered, lazy students on campus. Here's the cast. Grace, our main girl. Jane, the evil one. And Professor, the instructor of the course. I'm not doing that voice yet because I don't know if it's a dude or a chick. At first, Grace and Jane got along just fine. They were both interested in similar stuff and quickly became BFFs. Grace decided to show Jane her sketches and designs for handbags and purses. And Jane was so impressed by it. Because the sketches were in incredible detail, including all the patterns and sew lines coupled with figurative measurements. Even Professor was impressed by it, and it was no surprise that Grace got a high mark on their first major exam. Jane didn't do so well, and practically followed Grace everywhere to get pointers on how to do better. So Grace decided to help her out. Unfortunately, Jane turned out to be one of the most entitled, lazy, and selfish people that Grace has ever met. Things that Jane did to piss Grace off included, but not limited to, not paying attention, being late to their study session, never showed appreciation, didn't pay for coffee or snacks, complaining annoyingly about how hard it was to draw something. Grace pretty much gave up on her after a week, refusing to meet Jane outside of her class. Time went by, and for their midterm, everyone in the class had to do a presentation on the stuff they had designed. When it was Jane's turn, Grace was shocked to see Jane had stolen one of her designs. Thankfully, Grace had multiple designs going on, so there were no conflicts when it was her turn to present. But she was seething with rage. Grace had a meeting with the professor afterwards, and the professor knew what was going on, but couldn't really do anything with Jane because it turns out she was the daughter of one of the chairmen, or one of the major investors. Grace said she can't recall. The chairman apparently blackmailed the professor into giving Jane the best grades. The revenge. Professor did, however, help Grace devise a plan to humiliate and expose Jane. For the finals, the professor announced to the class they would do another presentation. But it would be three designs and advised they had to bring their A-games because professionals from industries would be grading their work. And the head of the department and the chairman would be there as well. So, you know how Grace had a bunch of sketches for the class? Well, Grace also had a separate sketchbook that had designs from major brands. Michael Kors, Coach, you name it. She never used these directly for class assignments, but rather as inspirations for her designs. Grace pretended to be all friendly with Jane again and brought the other sketchbook on their meetings, still putting up with all the problems mentioned above. Grace secretly worked tirelessly on her new design and did her best to keep it a secret from Jane. So the day of the final presentation arrives, and Grace and Professor are grinning because they know what is about to happen. Grace went first, and she got a lot of praise from the judges. After a few more presentations, the last one to go was Jane. Jane's presentation turned out to be another copycat, copying designs of not one, not two, but three different companies. After this presentation, this was how it went all down, at least according to Grace. So, are you saying you designed all these by yourself, right? That's right! And you swear that is really your design and didn't copy off from anything else, right? I swear. Hmm. You are aware your designs are from three brands? Huh? Are you aware that these designs are on the market right now and some of the most popular designs? Wait, hold on. Yeah, I was going to bring this up. If you had worked for any brands, you would have probably been fired. Or worst case, sued. But... Please, I am not done yet. Did you honestly think this would work? We, 
The judges have been in the industry for over 10 years. We know a copycat when we see it. But these aren't even my designs. They're from Grace. Is this true? Yes, but I never use them for major projects, nor call them my work. I just use sketches of them as inspirations for my own designs. Well, that was clear from your presentation. Turning back to Jane. Now, Miss Jane, this is a clear case of plagiarism. And I do hope your school is merciful on this matter. After the presentation was over, the chairman screamed at the professor in front of everyone, not realizing he just revealed all the blackmailing and the secret grade deal. Jane tried to call out Grace on how, You screwed me over! But it really didn't matter. No one listened to Jane's attempt at slander and was kicked out of the school. Chairman pretty much lost all support and had to resign and was replaced by a far more honorable and competent one. Edit, it's only been three hours and I already got a silver. Thanks guys. For everyone that's saying this sounds like a fake or webtoon K-drama plot, let me tell you that crap like this happens all the time in Korea. But most of the time, victims tend to just swallow the losses and try not to make a big deal out of it because they don't want the infamy of all drama that it will release. If you think gossiping and fake rumors were bad in US colleges, wait until you see what happens in Korean colleges. Peeps who have gone to or been to college in Korea. Is that true? Is it really dramatic? Is it like uh, Teen Wolf or Riverdale? I don't know what. What's dramatic on TV? Oh, 13 Reasons Why was dramatic. I know that. I watched that one. The first season, I think. I don't even think I finished the first season. It was okay. I don't know why I'm talking about it. The actress for Hannah's pretty hot. All right, this story's called Hangry Howards. So I'd like to start this post off by saying that this is my first ever Reddit post. Not that I've been living under a rock, just never really got around to making an account. Figure this would be a perfect place to start. About a year ago, I was working part-time as a server and needed to look for some extra work as the busy season had slowed down and needed to make more consistent money. I wasn't looking incredibly seriously as me and my girlfriend lived in a condo owned by her parents and I had virtually no bills. One night, me and my girlfriend go to get dinner from a relatively well-known pizza chain near us. Inside, they had help wanted flyers, practically spilling onto the floor. As I had multiple years of food service under my belt, I figured it wouldn't be an awful choice for some extra part-time hours. I mentioned to the manager that I was interested and would drop off an application the next day as I was dressed to go pick up pizza, which means a dirty t-shirt with my dog's hair on it, sweatpants, and flip-flops. Obviously not interview attire. We take our pizza and leave and the manager actually follows me into the parking lot practically begging me to just do the interview with him then. I thought it was weird but didn't think anything else of it and ended up getting hired. Now to give some backstory. When I say I have food service experience, I mean I have years of management experience, all the way up to assistant store manager for multiple fast food restaurants. The reason I didn't apply for a higher level job was, as I said, money wasn't really a huge issue for me, and at the time, I was just coasting and saving money to move out of state. After starting, it became very clear that my boss, who we will call Howard, had absolutely zero idea what he was doing. It started off with the restaurant having zero daily, weekly, or monthly cleaning duties, which if you worked fast food, you know is an absolute necessity. He would consistently not have the answers to questions I had and direct me to other employees. Simple questions like, which side of the oven a specific pizza goes in? And would smoke a cigarette every 20 minutes. The fact the store had been open less than a year and was already in disarray speaks to how things were being run. I would come to find out he was a janitor, or a custodial engineer as he liked to say previously, and had zero food service experience, and somehow got hired to be the general manager. I saw this as an opportunity for me to get paid a little bit more for doing the same work I would inevitably end up doing. I offered to be his assistant manager, as he had no one in his store who wanted to do it, and he had already asked me previously, on the condition that it stay part-time, because I really liked my serving job and didn't want to give it up. 
I told him I would spend the time teaching him the behind the scenes stuff that fast food trading doesn't put in manuals or online tests. How to effectively make schedules, how to make weekly cleaning charts, weekly build orders for shipments, things like that. Then, when busy season at the other job started, he could hire a full-time assistant. He delightfully agreed. Me and Howard were the only two managers at that store, with two drivers and five employees other than that. He would schedule me two open-to-close shifts in a row on his two days off, so he could keep them every week and would justify it by saying he worked open to close on the days I wasn't there since the manager has to be there to handle any of the cash from the safe. He never worked a single double shift. I worked this for a couple of weeks, and within that time, literally every single employee, except for me, Howard, and a driver we will call Jeff, had quit, and we had hired new people. Me and Jeff got along swimmingly as we were both stoners into the same music and fairly laid back. We also loved to talk crap about Howard. He was also Howard's next door neighbor and sold him some weed on occasion. So we had all the dirt all the time. It became clear to me that there was some money issue going on somewhere as we were getting way more tips at the front counter from credit cards on reports than cash going in the tip bag for employees. This wasn't the easiest catch, since he would save the tips up for two weeks to distribute them to employees on the weeks opposite a payday. However, with the store being an unorganized mess, it was hard to know if it was money being stolen or just simply numbers being put into the system incorrectly. One particular night, I was closing the store and was having some issues balancing the drawers and the numbers weren't adding up. I called Howard, who picked up with a hiccup and a slew of slurred words. I explained to him the problem I was having and he tried to walk me through it but was either too drunk or more likely just didn't know the answer to my question. I told him I would call his boss who I had met a couple of times and had mentioned if I ever had questions to call him. Howard immediately freaked out and said, don't do that, they don't want anyone to know how to work the numbers on the POS, which is point of sale, not piece of sushi, otherwise they'll try and steal money. Knowing that was an asinine response, I said that makes zero sense. How am I supposed to fix the problem if I don't know how it works? Then he said the words that started the snowball that would come crashing down on his whole life. He told me, Listen, you asking too many questions about cash. It makes you look really suspicious like you're the one stealing money. I told him, whatever, I would leave everything the way it was and he could fix it the next morning, or try at least. I had to be careful because in food service, if stealing money even comes into question, most places will just fire you since they can hire any zit covered kid to replace you. Because of this and just my morals, really being called a thief is the one thing I do not stand for. So, I hatched a plan with Jeff, who sided completely with me and had his suspicions for a while about him. Jeff knew that he was an alcoholic who could never turn down a night at the karaoke bar. Now, Howard was interesting because with how incompetent he was, he still tried to be the biggest people pleaser I've ever met, but in like a lonely and desperate way. He had practically begged me multiple times for us to go drinking together or to come smoke with me at my house. Keep in mind, I am 24 and he was 32 with a wife and two kids at home. We decided to both invite him out to a night of karaoke the night before he had a big meeting with his boss and the vice president of training for the whole company. Of course, since me and Jeff both invited him, he couldn't say no. I actually ended up having a good time that night. Not because Howard was good company, because my plan involved me buying Howard at least 7 Jaeger bombs, a double shot of Patron, and a lot of beer. And I had to drink a fair share to not look suspicious. What a burden, I know. My girlfriend, who was designated driving for us, dropped him off at home around 5.30 in the morning after a rather long smoke session at my house, suggested by me of course. Needless to say, he did not show up to work the next day. He called and told his boss, who was already at the store, that his kid needed to go to the hospital the night before and that he was still in the ER. They called me at around 11 a.m. to come in and cover a shift. When I got there, I asked Howard's boss why he called out and when he told me the reason, I said, 
Really? Well, I stopped by that karaoke bar last night for a few hours and he was there. I wonder why he took him in and not his wife. And I showed him a picture of an obviously messed up Howard and myself. They ended up firing Howard within 30 minutes and had offered me his position as I had more experience than him anyways and was already practically running the store and had completely taken over training new employees. I would have been perfectly content with him getting fired. I never imagined to have been offered his job. I was blown away. However, I still didn't accept the job as I didn't want the stress level the job came with. They say the best gifts keep giving. Well, so do the best revenge plots. Howard had his wife kick him out, ask for a divorce and full custody of his kids. He went over to Jeff's house and sobbed and cried, cursing me for ruining his life just so I could take his job from him. I would have given anything to have been a fly on the wall to see the look on his face when Jeff told him that I didn't take it and quit the job shortly after. That's like stealing a guy's girl and then just being like, nah, she ugly, and then just kicking her to the curb. Anyways, um, good story, good revenge, like, really good first post especially. But goodness gracious, you might have saved him from legal trouble too, because if they had investigated, you know, the discrepancies between the numbers and stuff, he could have been arrested. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.